All right, so continuing with our conversation of the Olympians, let's look at Aphrodite, okay? Her Greek name is Aphrodite, her Roman name is Venus, and she is the goddess of love and beauty. Now, the story of where she comes from, there's different versions. Several of them are inappropriate, and so I'm not going to tell those. If you want to look them up, feel free to do that. But they all generally end with her just appearing one day out of the foam of the sea, okay? And when she comes out, she's so beautiful that all the gods start fighting over who has the right to marry her. Again, for whatever reason, um, she has no say in in this at this point. And so Zeus comes up and says, no, 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 no. Um, we do not. Uh, we're not going to fight over this. I am going to determine who she's going to marry. And instead of saying himself, he actually says, I'm going to give her to Hephaestus, okay? The ugliest of all the gods. And I'm going to tell you why later. Um, but <clears throat> he ends up giving Aphrodite to Hephaestus, but she has nothing to do with him. Okay. As soon as she is given away to Hephaestus or whatever, uh, she abandons him because she falls for Ares, the god of war. And so she has this long standing affair relationship with Ares, which actually that whole concept of love and war, that's what that symbolizes, right? That's where it comes from. So uh, Aphrodite, god of love, Ares, god of war. Her symbols, super duper famous. Like, in fact, her symbols are everywhere still today. Uh, so beautiful birds, so the dove, the swan, the sparrow, uh, the myrtle tree, which in some cultures actually de represents death, but it's you know, a flowering plant. So things you would expect. Um, and we actually still see those now. Okay, like I, a lot of people ask me why I have like dove soap. Uh, in the background of this slideshow. <clears throat> and the reason for that is because of Aphrodite, okay, whose symbol is the dove. And if if you use dove soap, um, like our family does, you would know that they don't actually call that a bar of soap. They call it a beauty bar. Because if you use dove soap, you will be beautiful like Aphrodite. Okay? And I guess you can use me as a sample if you think it's accurate, actually working or not. <laughs> It's not, okay? Uh, another thing, um, if you are a man who shaves his face, then the most famous brand of, of razors probably like Gillette, okay, or something like that. But if you are a woman who shaves her face, then the more famous brand of razor for you is a Venus, okay? Venus is a very famous razor company for women, and Venus is the Roman name for Aphrodite because if you shave your face with a Venus, you will be beautiful like Aphrodite. Okay. Uh, so we see that all the time. Lots of symbols of her are still today, but she really isn't like an all good character. Okay. So she's a goddess of love and beauty. Sometimes she's redeemable. A lot of times though, she uses her good looks to like beguile people to trick them. Okay. So um, she's almost more like trickster-esque a lot of times, though she does support uh, lovers. There tends to always be kind of like the dark side of love with her as well. Okay. Uh, in fact, she's the one that wins that, that golden apple from Paris, if you remember in the Trojan War competition. And she does that by tricking him into being given the most beautiful woman in the world who was already married to somebody else. Okay. So that's kind of like a classic Aphrodite kind of story. Uh, she is always associated with Cupid or Eros. Sometimes, especially in the Roman version, he is her son. Uh, but if you remember, uh, Eros in Greek mythology sometimes came out first. So he wouldn't have been her son, but just like a companion because they're both like love deities. Okay. So that is her and Cupid chilling together. That's her and uh, Ares. Kind of hard to find like an appropriately clothed Aphrodite picture, but you get the idea. Now, Apollo, who is also known as Apollo, he could keep his name both places, is one of the most famous of all the Greek gods. In fact, second, I would say only to Zeus, he has the most um, like worshipers in ancient Greece, or at the very least gets like the most attention, super, super, super famous uh, Greek and Roman God. And he is the only Greek God that is primarily portrayed as good. Now he does make mistakes. Okay. I'm not saying that I'm going to talk to you about Wonder Woman a little bit here, but mostly he, he does good things. And it makes sense because when you look at what he's the God of, they're all very positive things. So archery, prophecy, medicine, music, the sun, archery leads to protection. Prophecy leads to forethought for the, the heroes. Medicine makes people feel better. Music makes people happy. The sun literally brings life. Uh, and so he is connected to all this positivity. Okay. He's a twin God. So, uh, Apollo and Artemis. Okay, remember like Leto and that snake that was trying to attack her babies? He's one of the babies. He's the one that like kills the python when he's like four days old or whatever. Uh, his symbols are what you would expect. Okay, the sun um, later, he's not the original sun god that um, he takes the place um, of, well, I just lost his name. I'll come back to him in a second, but he takes the place of the original sun god and he then becomes the sun god and his sisters, the, the god of the moon, the harp for music, the lyre for music, the laurel, the crow. But I will pick up with the rest of that and kind of what that all means in the next video.